job in City Hall Council Chambers located at 1716 West Main Street, Denver City, Texas, on Tuesday, July the 11th, 2023, at 6, about 3 p.m. Call to order. Roll call to my left. April Burns. Jacob's here. All here. Uh, send the keys out, but we have a quorum. There's no citizen comments, uh, so we'll go to new business 1A discussion regarding the FY 2023-2024 budget. Interim city managers, open for discussion. So the department heads have met a few times regarding the budget. We went through the revenue and everybody put in their wish list and then after that we started cutting and making putting what we thought was the most important needs first. This is everything that's included in this budget. We have a 22% increase in our medical insurance for all. We've put in an 8.1% COLA based on the Social Security Administration. These things for these departments we're using money out of the capital improvement fund to buy some other capital improvements, and these are the items that are not included, that we cut out. So I'm going to open the floor for comments and suggestions and thoughts. Well, let me bring my glasses. Just going through the budget, I just come on and going to throw out for a bit. Oh, you want to? Uh, Park support, uh, I think, needs an allocation of some sort. I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's in here or not, but I didn't see it. And also, I just want to bring up the question of the animal holding pens upgrades set in the park. Is this a necessary item or not? Uh, I did bring before the Park Board yesterday, and you know, where this was. Possibility we could get a $30,000 grant from the Rotary Fund at uh, Rotary Club. Uh, so if that's a priority, if it's not a priority, it's okay. They mentioned the uh, pickleball courts uh, in lieu of that. <coughs> so these are two items I don't bring up that I've not seen. Uh, at least maybe I'd like to see you discuss that. Cindy Kane, maybe again. Yeah. Well, did you? How much does the park board already have? The park board has fifty-three hundred dollars in their special fund account. Um, I think that's a good start. Let them start, see what they want to do, and then on into the year. If we want to move money, I think we can. But I, I think if we put a lot of money before them, before they even know what they're doing, I don't know how smart that is. We did talk about grants last night, too, and that's something that they're wanting to pursue, so that may be an option. So let me make sure I, I understand correctly all of the items that are in red over here. These are the items that uh, we cannot work into the budget, or they're like off the table for the year, or these are the items that we're going to discuss the, there, it's it's not off the table. If you want to, this is. I just try to get your way. It's like a wish list. Yeah, it's comments. not off the table. If you want to move something over instead of what we've done, you have every right to do that. This is just everything we've cut out of this year's budget. Just to make it balance. Just to make it balance. Right. So you're able to substitute if you want something. We just have to move. Something. Yeah. So we're, we, we're, what we have listed in here, at like for example, the police department. These these are the the top priorities that we fit into the budget. Yeah. This is okay. what's included over on the left in green, and then what's red on the right is kind of like the wish list that we'd like to add if we get more money. Okay. Or needs that they have. Make sure I understand. Can we start off by the department and let them talk a little bit about this? Sure. Any department prefer to go first? <coughs> Keith. All right, Keith. Mine's going to take longer than you know. Oh, <laughs> you're awesome. All right, Keith. Uh, 
bring something to that. One thing I'd like to hear, Keith, is uh, an explanation from you about lease versus buying vehicles. Uh, right. There's been a lot of discussion on this. Uh, last year, so. Okay. Uh, All right, uh, go for it. Okay, as far as street department is, um, I've canvassed my employees um, as far as the equipment we use, equipment we need, um, and we've narrowed it down to, um, we have a brand new backhoe with a um, narrow uh, dirt cutting bucket, or I'm sorry, rock cutting bucket, and we really need a wider um, dirt cutting bucket for ditch clearing. It's, it's uh, more efficient that way. It doesn't have the teeth, so less cleanup. And then a thumb attachment for whenever we have trees down. That thumb attachment on the back of the backhoe can grab the um, big log and put it up inside of a dump truck. Um, we currently have a really old one that's bent up really bad. Um, it's probably 20 years old or something. And barely usable, we still use it, but uh, we really need a new one of those. Now, um, on the right side, uh, what I can't fit to the budget is my fence around my shop. I can't tell you how old that is. Mickey or Joey might be able to tell you that, 30 plus years maybe. Um, but there's definitely security issues. It's falling down um, and dire need. I got a quote for 35000 from Pinnacle Fence. We need a new zero turn as well. The two we have are still operational and we're just piecing one of them together. Um, but we can probably get that in the last another year. The wood chipper, all these trees that we pick up, it's almost a guarantee after every storm there's at least one tree down, if not several. And currently, we, we're not supposed to burn the trees. Um, we kind of get away with it, but we need a wood chipper to chip it up and be be right. So, um, and then the portable uh, message board that was going to be very useful not only in my uh, road work, morning drivers that hey there's a road work ahead, but July Fest, Christmas parade, any event that we hold in the city we can use that as well. But again, that's that's nicety. Uh, really, but it's, it would come in very useful when it comes to my road work. Um, but again, we have other other things that are way more important in our eyes. So when it comes to the uh, parks department, um, the irrigation for trees, we do have a memorial tree program that uh, currently does not have irrigation. So we spend three to four hours every other day watering these trees. Um, because uh, the residents spend $250, $250 and they expect their trees to grow. So we have to maintain those. Um, so irrigation would help alleviate our workload. Um, skate park lighting, dog park lighting, soccer lighting, uh, all those have been talked about for several years. We just can never manage to get it in the budget. Um, and those really need to happen. Uh, the, the skate park currently doesn't have any dog park, has a little bit right now, um, I say barely enough, it sh could use a little beef up. The soccer field is, the, we don't have a league, but we have a lot of people using that for practice. Um, and it's, during soccer season, it's every night, so we really need some lighting out there for those kids. Um, we kind of talked about shade structures for the disc golf course and or the uh, walking trails. Um, so I would like to see, uh, and it, it's not a big structure, nothing um, huge, just maybe a small structure with some uh, um, a park bench so they can sit down for a few minutes and then continue on whatever they're doing. So, um, and that's just a rough number. That would only get us a couple. I mean, honestly, real world, eight or 10. But this will only give us a couple, ten thousand dollars. Only give us a few. Um, then a fertilizer spreader that helps my parks department um, get the grass growing and maintain all the fields. Uh, the auger frame are currently the one we have is very old, um, and um, 
we're welding on it a lot to make it uh, hold up. So we need that one. And then um, the trees for the walking trail. Um, we can kind of incorporate that almost into the memorial tree program, but the <coughs> memorial tree program doesn't give us enough. Um, and if you all walk on the back side of the tennis court with our path around there, it has absolutely no shade structures whatsoever, no shade trees. So I was just thinking it'd be nice to put three or four, maybe big oak or something out there. So here in 10 years or so, there'll be something. But that was just my thoughts. Um, and then on the other side for what we can't fund, um, we did install a new volleyball court um, last year, and that sand just hardened up. It wasn't the right sand, uh, so we need to remove that stuff and get the good beach volleyball sand, which is very expensive and kind of hard to come by. It's going to be difficult to find and resource, but um, we need that. The uh, volleyball lighting, we need some lights out there for the volleyball. The trencher. That would help us do the irrigation for the trees. That would help us run all these lines that we need. And honestly, it would help the street department side as well when we need to do something. But um, that's a dual purpose that mainly would be used for irrigation on the uh, street department side, unless we source it out to a plumber, because it does need to be a licensed plumber or an irrigation person. Um, but uh, whatever is that. Shade structures goes back to what I've already discussed, um, split the cost, and then again, more trees for the walking trail. Uh, I've already discussed that as well. So, um, I, I do want to touch on the Christmas banners right below that. My shop is the one that put those up every year. And I've been here four years. You know, when I got here, they were in old shape, and now they're in no shape. We cannot put these up, period. <laughs> um, so we this year, we will not have any type of Christmas decorations unless we buy some. They're in dire need. Um, and that's it for me. Any questions from the council? Or? Do y'all currently have a trencher? We do not. Huh. <clears throat> We've rented trenchers uh, from you rented the times we needed it. Um, so, but there's definitely a dire need of one with all these trees and <coughs> irrigation that we need to do. Definitely seems like it help. <laughs> yes. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. Uh, the, the Christmas banners. It seems like rather than buying them, I mean, we need to buy the materials, but is that something that could be a community project? maybe headed up by the beautification committee? I'm gonna refer that to the city <laughs> management team. I mean, I'm flexible. So we can ask I mean, whatever help I, I'm willing to accept, but uh, I'll give that to city management. Okay, too. I'm just thinking that the community could, you know, have a design contest and then <coughs> Um, maybe they can participate with the beautification committee to uh, make them. Do you know what the cost of the banners would be, approximately? Any idea? Well, I mean, we have. Oh, no, we don't. Did we I, have? I mean, I just had no, no idea if we're talking 2000 10000 I mean. I would push ten to fifteen. Yeah. Really? We were looking at a company that actually comes in and it, you do like a lease program with them for like three years. They come in, they put the banners up, they take the banners down, any other Christmas decorations, they do all of that and you just... They probably store them as well. Yes, they handle everything, um, but I don't have a definitive cost for that. But that's what we are looking at to do. That keeps Ernie and his crew from having to put banners up and take banners down. And, and just to let you all know, um, again, we, we don't mind doing that. Um, the street department is six guys. And with being on 334 traffic, I have 
one guy in the backhoe, one guy in the basket being lifted up, and then two uh, other vehicles uh, for traffic control. So that's my whole crew for two days, is putting them up and then two days taking them down. Um, but that's what we do, that's what we're, I'm, I understand that's what we're here to do, um, but it is very time consuming. Um, now, that's just the banner that you see on the poles. We still have our arch over there by the fire police department that is still usable. Um, we're still gonna put that up. We have the Christmas tree for the city hall and the wreath that we put up. So those are still operational. I'm just speaking about the banners that go up on the telephone poles because they are uh, get beat up by the wind and then put them up, take them down. Sometimes they get scratched or damaged. So they're just constant years and years of use. That's the only thing I'm speaking about right now. I could not even tell you when the last time we ordered banners. Have oh, gosh, yeah, it's been years. Which is a good thing, I mean, they last a long time. Right. And, and we, take, and we take care of them. We take right. care of our stuff. That's right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, my, we do have storage sheds. We have plastic bins that we put them in. Um, but the storage sheds are not critter proof. Uh, so we do have been met with a few critters here and there, uh, just nature of the beast. But um, yeah, my, my guys have to take care of their equipment. And that's why we have even um, equipment that's 1984 models <laughs> still being used. Um, so any other questions or concerns? Yes, sir. Can I just talk about the budget you submitted? Uh, there's, there's a line called maintenance streets. Yes, sir. 50,000 this year, 55 next year. And then I guess there's the sales tax money. Is this the two pots of money for all road construction? Number? Yes, sir. So what that is, is what I use maintenance of streets uh, and what I'm going to call my daily budget, which comes out of the general fund. Um, I buy, I'm going to say, possible material, um, our tap code, some road base, um, anything to do with that. Now, our big projects that we do, um, I'm going to say Welch Road Repair, that came out of the street sales tax. All the chip seal roads that we do come out of the street sales tax um, because we have several hundred thousand dollars um, collected through that, so that's, that's, I'm able to do a lot of road work for that. The 50 and 55,000, that just mainly kind of buys small materials um, and little things that I can do out of the budget. Um, but, and I, and I say little compared to the several hundred thousand <coughs> that I can spend because one, um, one sort of tack coat for power repairs is $2,500. Um, a load of uh, cold mix asphalt. Um, I can't remember. It's a hundred dollars a ton. I usually get about 24 tons at a time. So you know, all that adds up a lot. Um, so I do. I, I do heavily rely on both. Yeah. We we got this May, uh, email from you stating that uh, you spend over seven hundred forty thousand dollars a year on. So that would be out of all, all funds. Um, I think that email mainly was strictly out of the uh, street sales tax money um, because the, the, the kind of the pothole stuff and the, the smaller right. items, I, I don't really speak out. It's on the um, monthlies that yeah, we fix so many potholes, so that's what you should kind of focus on with that money, really. Is there, is, what about the priorities as far as the sales tax money now that Welsh Land is done? Where do you stand on coming up with a priority for what's next? Um, so I, I've discussed repairing Harbor Point Road. Um, and again, that's going to be, have to be done in phases. Um, <coughs> Legendary needs to be repaired as well. Luther Lane needs to be repaired. But I believe, and I haven't discussed it with city management yet. Uh, because I'm still midsummer heavy working on this year's, but come um, probably October, November time frame, um, I'm going to discuss the city management on priority on that. But again, Harbor Point Road is a big one, and 
uh, legendary lanes, the big one as well. There, there, and there's a lot of arterial roads. I want to say off the top of my head, Commodore, Downing Main. Um, there's a few roads in Loon Bay. There's some roads at Tamarack that are that needed as well. But again, um, that needs to be discussed and prioritized. At our next budget workshop, I'm hoping that we can have any tweaks or adjustments to the general fund budget, and we'll also have the special fund budgets to talk about as well. Okay, any other questions for this budget? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Uh, mine's pretty simple. The fire department, <coughs> last year we ended up getting the boat and some other things. I was trying to gate back for the police department for their needs and if the street had a couple topics that they wanted to cover. Um, right now all we've got included is for mobile radios from the switch over to 700 megahertz which is the same problem that the police department's having with their cars. We ended up getting uh, handheld radios off of a grant, and they get out fine when you're outside, but as soon as you sit in the car and get the fire truck, you're going to the house, you know, you, um, you lose your ability for communication on it at times. So we, we came up with uh, $15,000 to kind of cover. The radios are running anywhere from around 3,500 to 4,500 a radio. Um, grants are out there. I believe PD is also going to be applying for one also. Uh, paging system with this changeover to 700 megahertz and getting away from our VHF, it's all still working and it's still usable. The license are up to date on it, but with that being said, our storm sirens can't be activated off a 700 megahertz system, nor can the paging for the fire department at this time. So uh, PD has a huge console that's in the way for dispatch that really is, serves what two purposes, paging us out Boat and anchor. or uh, setting off sirens that are just two buttons, you know? And the console is this big. It's that big, it takes up so much room for dispatch. Um, and the smaller unit's more like a telephone size for a residential telephone, you pick up the handset, you can use it as the mic and listen also as the radio itself, you just punch in a code. Sirens either go off or cancel them out the same way. This same is, with this is the newer encrypted system that was started like a couple of years ago. Within yes. the last couple of years, okay. And it just barely went live for Gun Barrel in February. Yeah. Okay. And, and it's it's got issues, but everybody in Henderson County are facing these same issues. Uh, we're just one of the last of the cities to actually start utilizing it. Uh, with that over on our wish list, as I said, I was getting back for wish, you know, we've got some daily trucks, fire department trucks are always maintained, you know, we're, they're expected to be in operable condition, so we just put off anything like that as a five-year plan. Um, right now for the fire department, I think we were jumbling between two different storm sirens, one for Lakeside Acres or one for Harbor Point. I have to replace. To replace, or, or to, to add. replace, yeah. They're, uh, you can almost flip a coin. They're both problematic. Uh, the Lakeside Anchor one, you open the door for the batteries and it falls off the ground. <laughs> Just from corrosion. You know. <laughs> Harbor Point, the door's nice on it, but half the time the siren doesn't come on, you know, from lightning strikes. Uh, there's so many different variables. A, a lot of it's storm related. Uh, power surges on their transformers because they still, they, they, get, they get power from uh, the street. They charge up batteries with individual chargers. Uh, so if the power goes off, they revert to battery, and then you got four batteries that can fail. Uh, the new sirens that we've been purchasing are all solar. The, you know, the solar chargers can go out on that. You could have a, a ton of cloudy weather that could cause them not to be able to maintain enough to keep the radios up. <coughs> we haven't had that problem yet because we haven't set them off with a failure. Uh, but that was over on the wish list. Uh, we'll just put it back up for next year. Does that and cost for both of them or for no, one? No, that's for one. That's for one. That's for one siren. But currently our system that we have was put in in 1980, 1996. 1996. 
So they, they well served what they're supposed to, you can't buy parts for them. We've got a company out of Oklahoma that when I can't figure something out on them, uh, they'll come out and you know they'll have a charger left in a box that they bought new on shelf stuff. So that's how we maintain what we've got. Do you guys have any questions on regular line item issues? I think I increased, I asked for an increase uh, on my maintenance of auto with having older trucks. You know, uh, tires nowadays they used to be three hundred fifty dollars for a front fire truck. Tires now seven hundred and fifty. You, it's so easy to go into some of the subdivisions and different areas or in the city and you know, catch a spike in the tire that takes two tires out while you're driving in. It can impact you know, $1,000 a pop, 1500 just like that on our trucks. Uh, our, we have so many different maintenances that are required to do to keep our eyes rating down. Uh, it, burn, it burns through uh, your maintenance auto so fast. Uh, I think a regular PM is about $2,250 on a fire truck with no problems with the truck, no wiper blades, no tires, no lighting issues. Then uh, you, you still got to do pump testing on it annually. That impacts heavily. Or if there's any failures, so usually there's something that <laughs> seems to fail. Out. Um, other than that, do you have any questions? That's about all I had on mine. Is the, um, the maintenance for the the new boat from last year, is that just built in the maintenance of auto? Maintenance of other. It'll be maintenance of other. Maintenance of, oh, I see it now. Okay. And hopefully we don't have any problems with that. Sure. For that, for the next four or five years. Uh, it's increased our fuel probably by, for the sense we have, <coughs> maybe close to a thousand bucks with the air show and stuff. Yeah. Uh, but that's kind of been also on a monthly report to show them the same water rescue boat or boat fuel. And we do buy fuel from uh, Sefco for it versus our pump, just because there's no alcohol in the fuel that we're putting in the boat. Mm -hmm. uh, in case it sits for long periods of time, the fuel doesn't go bad as quick. I have a general question. Uh, in, in an emergency situation, can your Radio, or can, can you two communicate by radio, or are they separate systems? They are separate, they're separate systems. They're, they're one system in a core, but they're on two different, I don't know what you call it, user IDs, it's the way it's all done, voice over IP and stuff through the county. Which to me was a complete step backwards because they used to be able to communicate. I, it makes no sense to me. me the only way to cure that is if Governor Earl City were to say, hey, we're going to buy on four, and we'll put an antenna wherever it would be feasible, which may require another tower. I don't know what that cost would even be, but it would be half a million bucks probably just to fix that. With that being said, any county unit, um, any, anywhere in Henderson County that would come through our area, that would include an extra tower where there'd be no dead spots where there is now. The closest tower to us is Tanner Regional Water, department out by past the dam. That's where the actual uh, DPS tower is for Henderson County. And I believe Kaufman's about to put one in Maybank okay. at Kaufman's expense. But right now, nobody can intercommunicate. Henderson County can, you know, cross over Kaufman and use their towers. It's in the works. Yeah, we we can't talk to Maybank. I mean, ridiculous. And that's the same with us. We it's have. Scary. It's dangerous. Yeah, okay. So. So I'm, I'm just picturing your guys are out and they see something and they've got to call it into dispatch. Dispatch has to get a hold of you. So it's got to go through a tree rather than... Directly. Yeah, we call it into dispatch. Dispatch then has to call Kaufman County to get the information to Maybank, unless it's nothing during the day. Yeah, it's somebody north of us. But, uh, <clears throat> we have one radio that set up that we bought years ago when Kaufman went in on the 700 system and put those in first. Um, I'm going to say probably four years ago we bought a radio just keeping the engine to pay back money for them out. They still page out off their old VHF system out of Kaufman to make bank, scurry, tear, whoever made the county uh, departments. But then from that point, the fireman answer on the radios with the new 700 system, which is, you know, five, seven years old already. So Gumbrell will hear and page out on Maybank on our old system. 
And then we just think no one showed up to the house last so week. They were going to be the first ones in. You know, here everybody camps there and all, you know, because they're already using their sub hundred. Well, we're in the second boat. I, I can't hear what PD does. He can't hear what I do. Um, there's no real scan feature yet that the county's allowed between fire and police because of what you're saying on the, the user ID being uh, like scripted where. Encrypted. Yeah. Uh, I, I guess where people can't get paid or do 700 and pick that up. Yeah. But now on the Kaufman side, they they don't have it encrypted like that. They can keep fire unencrypted and police encrypted or sheriff's departments not use the system. This is really a radio committee issue with Henderson County and their control. Yeah. It's bad when we got to use another agency that controls what we can and can't do on a radio system. I mean, we have we have no control over it. If they don't allow it, we can't do it. That's disappointing. You know. So, what's the fix? Yeah. I think time. Time? It's just going to take a while for them to get all their bugs out of the system, get some different <coughs> complaints coming in from different cities or departments that are using it, to where the radio committee will allow, you know, uh, a scan feature. Because they're the ones programming our radio. We have to wait for them to come program every user ID, which equals every individual radio. So that's the Henderson County Radio Commission? Committee. They're over that. Which is part of the sheriff's office, basically. That's kind of sick. Not to beat the police department or law enforcement down, <laughs> but when it, comes, <laughs> when it comes to the committee, when they were throwing this idea five years ago uh, for Henderson County, the fire departments, the cities that had fire departments in them that were foot and built also. I think all the fire departments ended up being just a means of bringing this price down per unit for the county's big wish list because it was costing them several million to get set up. And we were forced to use it if we're going to communicate with Paint Springs, if we're going to communicate with Tool. Uh, to where right now, you know, the VHF radio on the old channel for Maybank. And at some point, some dispatcher will finally answer, you know, the, the call by call call on um, the HF. It's not their priority what they're listening for. But, yeah. But uh, Henderson County got totally away from it. So it is what it is. I understand the reasoning, but it's an acceptable I do not but understand yeah, the reasoning. Well, the old system we had, to me, works better than this new state-of-the-art oh, technology no that we get. No question, absolutely. Uh, like, I don't have a mobile radio in my car, so all I work off is portable. Mm -hmm. You get in the car, the portable sitting right here, <coughs> now you get the car all around you. You can't, can't, you you can't talk to them. I can hear dispatch, they can't hear me 90% of the time. Mm -hmm. You know, standing outside, if you're on one side of a tree, it might not work. You walk to the other side of the tree, it'll work. You go in Walmart, it don't work at all. But this actually so, can tell you, hey, we can't hear you, could you step over a little bit? Because yeah. the, the difference with digital and uh, analog, obviously, is the static and analog you hear, but you kind of hear something. Digital is just like what you see on TV where it's like, or nothing. Just it's, like a you know. cell phone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How does it go? I don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> So just to keep talking about the radio side for a second, we've, uh, you know, I put in, we don't have the mobile in-car radios. When they ordered our radios, all they ordered us was these portables. So uh, I just found out that there's going to be a grant opportunity that's opening up in December. Okay. I'm still asking to approve that in case we don't get the grant. Some of those grants, you got to have it. Ta property tax base and all of that to qualify for. I don't know the stipulations behind this grant yet, but even if that gets approved for October, I'm planning on holding off on doing anything until December when that grant opens up to see if we can get the grant for the funding on it. Uh, but if not, I need, need that for the backup so these officers can have communications. And the grant would be how much? It'll be for all, all of it, hopefully. 34000 and that's, like I said, that's just for the radios that go in our cars. So, Not on your person. No, these are all new. We, well, <coughs> I say they're new. They're, what, two and a half years old? Two and a half years old and been programmed since February. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They sat there on chargers throughout the PD for two years just charging because they were worthless. 
Uh, and the in-car cameras, are, are those new or replacements? That, that's going to be all brand new in-car cameras. So all the cameras that are in our cars now are obsolete. They don't work. Uh, when they quit working, we were told they weren't getting replaced from previous administration. Uh, I've gotten letters from the DA's office called to this, you know, because we get in a pursuit, we do a traffic stop. Right. Everything nowadays, if you don't have video, is probably not going to get prosecuted. Right. Okay? And we're in car pursuits all the time. Uh, every traffic stop we do, DWIs. You know, you stop a DWI on a traffic stop, that video is crucial. Because your body cameras are good, but if I'm standing here talking to her, it's probably got about this much of her. We get in a fight, it's got about this much of her. You get in a fight in front of a squad car, you you got the whole the whole view of everything. The traffic stop, the violation prior. Because those come on, uh, you can program them for different times, but most of them come on about 30 seconds prior to you turning your lights on. Okay, so, because it's constantly recording, but once you turn your lights on, it goes back 30 <coughs> seconds. So all of that's there, the initial reason for turning your lights on. All of that, like I said, I've got letters from the DA's office called on this because they want these videos and we don't have access to do it. Our server crashed on that system and half of the cameras in the cars didn't work to begin with. Okay, uh, We just got new body cameras this year. Uh, the car cameras interact with those new body cameras. So when we turn the lights on in the car, it activates the in-car camera. It also activates the body camera. If I'm standing in here dealing with somebody and my body camera's on and one of my partners walk in the door, I'll automatically turn his body camera on so they don't have to remember to. Uh, it's a pretty neat system. And uh, the, the server, is, is that still an issue? Or? The camera server's gone. It's fried. It, it's so you need a whole new just, server no, as well? No. With this camera system, it's all going to the cloud. Gotcha. It's all evidence secured. Uh, that's part of the storage and everything related related to it. There's a yearly fee that, that goes with that uh, for the for the storage stuff. But that is uh, that that's for the cameras and having them installed in the first year of uh, service and maintenance and, and storage. Thirty four oh fifty four. No. No. Nineteen. Nineteen. Nineteen of thirteen. Nineteen thousand. What about license plate readers? Uh, did you think about that in the budget this year at all? Or? No. Those are very expensive. <coughs> and I am looking at that, but that's going to be another grand opportunity. The cost of those will come down with time. I, I doubt that, it. That's a national system, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, and the, the camera itself, they charge you a fortune for. It's, uh, I think they're anywhere from thirty to $50,000 a camera. So, uh, but I am looking at the grants to put a system on two squad cars, and I'm also looking at uh, another grant to put them on poles at every entrance to the city. Uh, uh, the feds make a lot of cases off of the license plate readers, you know, because everybody's got felony warrants and everything else are going into that system. You got a car that's stolen, it goes into that system, they come in through Harbor Point. Dispatch gets a notification and a picture of the vehicle. Hey, this just passed your camera, headed this away. Mm -hmm. So we already know what we're dealing with by the time we get to it. Uh, isn't, uh, isn't EDC looking at a, a system like that to track uh, where people are coming from to buy in our city? Is there any way to partner up with them and maybe cut the cost for the city? Uh, it's possible. Ours is on the law enforcement side. Theirs is on the civil side. So I don't know how the two of those will intermingle. I had to do some research on that because I think theirs is a different system. But uh, I'll have to do some checking to find out. I don't know. Uh, I do know we can partner with some POAs and stuff if they want to buy cameras, and then we can get them put in and we can monitor them. Uh, Walmart, if they wanted to put them in at Walmart, we could monitor them. Uh, so there's a lot of stuff, a lot of cases are getting filed off those license plate cameras. They've been a major asset to law enforcement. Uh, Lexi Poll, that is a policy-based program. You know, my goal before I leave here is to get this place accredited by the Texas Police Association. Uh, in order to do that, there's a whole lot of things that's got to change, and a part of that's our policies. Okay, 
uh, every chief that comes in, whether they're from this state or another state, they rewrite the policies to whatever state they came from that have no bearing on our state here as far as the laws go or anything else. This policy system is done through the National Chiefs of Police Association through Lexipo. They've got chiefs from all over the country. They've got attorneys from everywhere that read and review every one of these policies. They're all approved for each state that they go into. Uh, basically, they'll write our entire department policy. Okay? Uh, every year when the legislature meets and they change the laws and all the different regulations that go with it, whether it be state, federal, whatever, all of those go through them. They write the policies, they send it out to us. Whoever the chief is gets a, gets the notification of this policy. There's a deal for them to approve it. There's a deal for them to edit it, to go for our city. Then we send it back to them. Their attorneys look over and say, yes, it's within the guidelines. We can do this. And then it gets actually sent into our policy. Okay, right now our policy is in a three ring notebook. This policy is all online, so every one of our officers have access to it 24 7. They're out on a traffic stop, I don't know what to do policy wise, they pull it up right there on their phone. This also pertains to training on our policies. They will send out little tests every <coughs> month related to our policies to these officers with a little scenario, a policy, questions that they got to answer, and they've got to pass these every month. Uh, and it's a deal so they can't come back and say, well, I didn't know the policy. Okay. Uh, and that's a part of the accreditation program. There is a bill that's on the uh, governor's desk right now uh, wanting to mandate every agency in the state of Texas to be accredited within three years. I hope that doesn't get signed this year. It's going to get signed. I just hope it doesn't this year because it's going to be hard for us to do it in three years here financially. Uh, there will be some funding that's going to come with that if the, if the governor signs a bill on it. Uh, so we'll be able to get some funding through that to, to make that happen also. Uh, what else we got? The stuff in the middle. Stuff in the middle. The file system, the, for those of you, some of you come up there and seen the file system we've got now. Uh, mix match file cabinets. I've got 20,000 pounds worth of files in an attic up there that I've got dispatchers climbing up a crawl space about this big up into the attic whenever we have open records requests that we need to get. The file system I'm looking at will end up taking an office uh, out that's in the middle where a dispatch system center is. There'll be one of the rolling file cabinets like you got at your doctor's offices that will hold at least 10 years worth of our files. Also built into that file system is a, a weapons storage on the back wall uh, where all of our long guns, our tasers, our ammunition, all of that stuff will be secured. It'll have a roll down lockable door because right now I've got an entire office that we're wasting just for gun storage and everything else to where I can secure it into this uh, filing system also. Uh, remodel, that's uh, $30,000 for a remodel. That's to remove walls and everything to open up dispatch. Uh, for that file system where everything is in one room so the dispatch of all of our warrants, all of our criminal trespass warnings, all of that stuff will be in that file system which will put it right there behind dispatch where they've got full access to the file system and everything. Uh, and then the, your stuff up here that... What we got on the red side? Okay. Police cars and dispatch console. Dispatch console I took out this budget. Uh, that's 57000 That's the sit and stand console. You know, they're in there for Every dispatch across the nation is going to these uh, consoles. And it's the entire console, the computers, the radios, everything. You lift a button and the entire console is set up and you can stand and work. Or you can push it, go back down and set and work. Uh, so the remodel 30K is or is not? It is. It is. Okay, good thing. The console is the only thing no. that's not in the budget. Uh, can you tell me where that thirty thousand dollar number came from? Did, have you already? What's that for the remodel? Yeah. Uh, that's coming off the top of my head. I've got three contractors that are looking that are giving us a bid. Okay. I used to own a construction company, so I kind of know where they're going to go with what they got to do. Gotcha. Uh, that thirty thousand could be a little lower. It might be five thousand more. Just, it, I, I think we can get it done for that or less. So. Well, I think what we keep forgetting is that inflation has been a good news on the plus side. It's also bad news on the negative side because it's costing the city 
it's going to be more to do to run its operation. But maybe more to, it may end up being a wash before it's all over. Yeah. But that, that, uh, that 30,000 includes removing four walls, shimming up the, the attic space that's up there, uh, re sheet rocking, paint, texture, new flooring. And then there were some security doors that also needed to be replaced, weren't there? There's some that need to be fixed. I don't think we need to replace them. Okay. But uh, we need to get a, uh, <coughs> which is minor, just, you know, dispatch. Somebody comes to the front door and they need in, dispatch got to get up from all the way out and around the hall. We need to get a button put in there so they can push a button and they can come in the door. Sure. Just some little things like that, but it's, that's minor. Okay. Uh, the doors, I think, will be fine. I don't think we need to, you're talking about the Sally Ford. Yes. Yes. Those do need to be replaced. Uh, every one of them are split down the middle. Sally Port hadn't been used in two years. Okay, because it quit opening, so they just pulled the deal and dropped the, the opener on it. Because uh, when you do try to open them, the door starts wobbling so much, it just shuts down the, the door opener. So the doors need to be replaced. That's about $2,400, I think, is what they gave me a bid to get, get the Sally Port back up and running. Uh, what else we got? Cars? Okay. All right. American National Leasing. I've, I've talked to Enterprise. Enterprise won't uh, do anything with us unless the entire city gives them a commitment over the next couple of years to go with all of their cars. Uh, so I quit talking with them. And that's who a lot of your places are using nowadays. Kaufman County, every vehicle Kaufman County owns is leased through Enterprise. Uh, and Right now we've got in the budget for two cars. It's about $150,000. That's for the car, new equipment, new everything. The cars we're running right now are 2016 Chargers. And I think, I don't know the exact number, but I've spent close to 50, maybe a little more than $50,000 on maintenance this year. I know I've spent, since January of last year, I've spent over 15,000 just on one car keeping it running. The equipment's starting to break down because those cars sit out here running 24 seven. You know, if they're not driving, they're sitting there idling. Uh, they're not. They're not made to last for eight years on patrol. Uh, with this lease program, I can lease six cars, which would be two trucks, four tacos, for about a hundred, hundred and ten thousand a year. Okay, and that's fully equipped, new equipment, new everything, ready to go. Uh, only thing we'll have to add would be our radars, our mobile radios and our in-car camera system. But that'll include new lights, new everything, new stickers. Uh, the, most of these, car, these cars will be under warranty basically the whole time we have them. So the only thing we gotta do basically is change the oil and maybe set, put a set of tires on them when we got them. Okay. Uh, and on, the, on this form we got the top, let's look at the, the Chevy crew cab truck. At the top, that 57339, that's the price of just the truck. Okay. The 15,000 that's below that is for the equipment. The lights, the console boxes, the safety partitions, everything that's gotta go in that vehicle. Uh, so the total, I'm looking at the three year deal on the truck and I'll tell you why here in just a second. But it, it, looking at the three year, you've got one at the end that we owe $12,000 and we can keep the truck. Okay. Or at the end of that, we can pay a dollar and keep the truck. Okay. Uh, looking at that, because our admin cars, you know, we've got, I've got a uh, 2020 Durango that's got 30,000 miles on it. That'll last, this, we paid for it, that'll last us the next 10 years, okay? The other vehicles that I've got in CID are hand-me-downs from patrol that have 100 plus thousand miles on them. They're breaking down nonstop. Doing this on a three-year deal, at the end of it, we can pay a dollar, we can keep those two trucks that might have 50,000 miles on them. We can roll those into CID. Uh, we have no truck whatsoever at the police department. So we go work a big burglary, we recover property at a pawn shop, we got no way of recovering that property and bringing it back without sticking lawnmowers and stuff in the charger and the back of a Durango. 
Yeah. So my, my goal is to get two trucks. Those trucks will actually be used on patrol. They're, they're pursuit rated vehicles. Uh, and then uh, the Tahoe's, these guys are out here 12 hours a day. I don't know if any of y'all have ever sat in a charger for 12 hours, but those ride like a tank, very uncomfortable. Tahoe set like a truck. It's a lot more comfortable. There's a lot more room in there, uh, especially when you got this gun belt and everything on, being cramped in that little bitty space. It's hard to get seat belts on and off. It's hard to, to move and breathe in them. Uh, but like I said, we can lease six vehicles fully equipped for 125,000 for, if we do the three years on the Chevy truck and four years on the Tahoe's, okay? It's 125,000, 558 a year. Or we can buy two brand new ones for 150,000 a year, for 150,000. And then I still got four that were. How come we've never looked at leasing in the city at all? Because it's debt. Okay, it's debt. Now, what does that mean? What, what are the implications? And uh, why was it set up? Um, well, uh, until recently, just a few years ago, we didn't have the extra money to spend on debt. Um, what this will do is, if we're going to, and lease is a good, I mean, it does look really good on paper. We don't have a property tax. We, know, we have no way to secure that debt. They don't like you to secure it with sales tax because sales tax is so volatile, but that's all we have. We don't have a property tax to pay debt. So we try to stay away from debt. That's why we purchase what we can to stay away from debt. If we get into a lease program, that's $100,000 that's gotta come out of the general fund every year, where right now we're buying cars every other year. Um, and it's completely up to you. If you want to look at debt, we're going to have to cut $100,000 because you can't pay debt out of the capital improvement fund because that fund will be gone in four years. We're going to have to budget for it every year. Well, did you budget for $150,000 for two cars? We did out we of the capital out, improvement yes. fund. So the $100,000 is there it's just to buy two cars rather than at least six. No, no, it's out of the capital improvement fund. We're they moving can money be used for cars. to purchase them. Yeah, we moved it into the general fund to purchase those cars. That's 150,000. To buy two. To buy two. Yes. Well, I, I and think there's some level of concern here about how many vehicles can you put on the street, and how safe are our, our communities, and reliable do we have equipment to uh, respond. Uh, you know, I'd hate to get calls and say, well, we just couldn't be there because we didn't have enough cars, this or that. But I just think the police department has, should have that highest, highest priority in these kind of vehicles. Um, as far as the kind of work that you do, fire being next. Uh, so that's just my thought that I, I really think that we should look at least as an option. And the, the reason that I'm looking at the three-year on the Chevy truck, okay, the payment on that's higher. It's probably the highest payment out of the deal. Is because in three years we can pay a dollar and keep that truck. So if animal control needs a truck or if code enforcement needs a truck, we can pay a dollar and keep that truck. And it's but the debt than, continues. But, in four years, the debt drops down from 100 to what did you say, 80? Yes, because we're the not. Debt we, the debt continues. It does not go away. Yeah. Once that lease is up. Then we'll get those cars get traded in. We get, get new ones. New ones, okay. But if you'll look at uh, let's say that first line, okay. No, let's look at the Tahoe's, okay. Uh, on the third one there, where it says seventy thousand, the yellow seventy thousand two ninety six. That nine thousand dollars is basically what the leasing company is guaranteeing us that truck, that Tahoe at the end of that lease is going to be, okay. But in four years, that Chevy Tahoe is probably going to have. 60,000 miles on it, okay? So you take a four-year-old Chevy Tahoe and go sell it, it's gonna sell for a lot more than $9,000. It's probably gonna be more like 20, okay? So anything over that $9,000 that they sell that Tahoe for is gonna roll back to us into that new lease, okay? So that next lease will probably be, could possibly be probably about 80,000 instead of the 125 a year because when all the equipment that we've got in these cars, the first set we get, we're going to transfer into the next one. 
And so instead of putting other money into repairs that have to be made other than tires and oil changes. Yeah, because I know right now I'm pushing probably close to 50000 this year just in vehicle maintenance, keeping those chargers running. Seems like it's the way to have new equipment all the time. And then you'll have a pool of vehicles too at the end if y'all want to keep that we can roll into other services or they can roll up into admin or whatever whatever they decide to do with them. Which I only did that on the truck side just because our admin cars, you know, if I got two investigators, if I if I end up hiring another sergeant, he's gonna be a CID sergeant and I don't have a car for him. So, you know, it's a... It, everybody in the front office says, I need four unmarked cars, basically, for admin. That includes two investigators, and then we need at least six on patrol. During the duration of the lease, is the equipment up, upgraded? Well, say you have a problem with the radio or something. How's that handled? No, the equipment we're buying. The equipment so is all three hours. Yes. Yes, that 15000 that's built into those, that's actually coming from an upfitter. We're buying a truck. They ship the truck over there to the upfitter, and they just attach that bill onto the lease. Okay. At the end of that lease, the equipment's ours. So when the new cars come in, we take the ones we've got over, and they switch the equipment out from that vehicle to that vehicle. So is this equipment that would come out of old cars? Not the first time. Not the first time. First time would be totally brand new. Yeah, that's what I'm getting at. So yeah. be totally brand new. Yeah, because the equipment I've got in these cars, like three, four years old. the switches are going out, the yeah. sirens are going out, it's constantly something breaking on. Because I don't know if those, that equipment came new in those cars or if they know. got moved out of other cars. It probably was there. moved. But they're at least 2016. So, seven years old. Yeah. Seven. And been road hard out here on these roads. And people not taking care of them. <coughs> Well, I think the hand-me-down would be good too for certain mine types of vehicles. Didn't need a lot of mileage after we just got turned in. I think it's a good option to consider how we do. I think that's all that I had. Yeah. Yeah, because I took the dispatch oh. console out this year. Um. Oh, Keith had Keith had talked about a 10-year pay scale. Right now we're on a 20-year pay scale, which means in 20 years you top out, except if you're me. <laughs> um, moving that to 10, a 10-year pay scale where you top out in 10 years. Which is more common around the nation than 20-year top for, out. For recruitment. Yes. Yeah, yeah. but for I'm people who have worked here 10 years and they're going to top out and not get raises, I don't know. Um, and then he but talked about top. certification pay increase as well. But they're going to top out in 10 years, so they're not going to be able to afford to start over Hopefully, the Hopefully they would top out in 10 years, hopefully, because yeah. that doesn't happen for everyone. Right. we got about 15 minutes for the next meeting. So what are we talking about there? Financially? Yeah. That I don't know. That, that would it be, would be uh, a little a more huge discussion. Be be, yeah, that's... That would be a huge adjustment because we have several employees who have been here more than 10 years that we would need to pay them top, top, at the top of their scale. So that would be a huge adjustment. The other one was certificate pay. Uh, a lot of agencies around here are paying $1,200 per certificate. What I mean by that is you get, when you get out of the police academy, you're a basic peace officer, then you get your intermediate, advanced, and master's. The intermediate, advanced, and master's is what they pay extra for. Uh, Kaufman County is $1,200 per certificate, so $3,600 if you have a master's, okay? And it's just an incentive to get more people in here that's more trained and, and capable of handling stuff. And that's uh, not one time. every year. Yeah, $1,200 per year per certificate. What do you currently do? $300? It's $300, $600, and $900. But that's not added together. So basically, three hundred dollars per certificate. So like a master's for five hundred a year. Yes. Yeah. So, so you get three hundred for a year intermediate, three hundred for advanced, and then three hundred for master's. Um, and the only other, other than the increase in medical and the cola for everyone, the other uh, 
big capital project would be a new website and administration. And this is the, the first year cost is around $70,000, which would include a new website. It would include mass notifications, which we already do. We would, we would just be using a different company. It's agenda management, permitting, planning, and zoning, code and ordinances. Next request, which I'm not really sure what that is. It, maybe it's open records. And then archive social, which would archive all of our social media pages. Um, the cost annually for that would be around $30,000 after the first initial cost. But it would completely revamp all of our website and modules that we have. So is the 70000 includes the first year service? Yes. Is that just to make it? No, that's the first year service, and, and then each year after it would be around thirty thousand. And that is, or is not in the budget, right? Now? It is in the budget. It is in the budget. And that archive social is going to cover us too. Yep, yeah. all of our social, all, all of our all city, all okay. city pages. That's a definite need. So the discussion is: Do we want to lease cars? Is there anything that you want to move off the red list onto the green and blue list? And if so, we need to, what do we want to cut to get there? But we can't do that in 10 minutes. Yeah. Well, I, th I think we need to look at where we might find some additional money without cutting somewhere. And I think there is some money. Didn't you move over 100 and some odd thousand for community center? Uh, that's, inc that's, I took that out of that money. So we have 500,000 for the community center and around 200, 20,000 left for capital improvements. 500,000 over and above the COVID money. The opera money, yes. So we're at two million, is that correct? Well, what I was thinking, 20,000 let me take it out and put somewhere else and somebody move, move over. Well, the, what, with the leasing of the cars, we couldn't take it out of capital outlay. We would have to actually cut something because that is a lease and it's going to be due every year so you don't take it out of capital to move it into we would have to actually find where to cut to pay for that every year because the capital improvement plan after two years would be drained well it's my recommendation is to let's go forward and see what that cost would be and uh come back with recommendations of where those cuts could be made i think it's important that i that we need to address the only place to cut <coughs> that much <laughs> would be the raises for the COLA for employees. Oh, surely no, that's all of this is a hundred all of this added up is a hundred and eighteen thousand. And new spending? What do you say hundred and eighteen? These everything that they're asking for okay. totals a hundred and eighteen thousand. So I don't, we would have to really put our minds together to find $125,000. So that totally get rid of health insurance for $120,000 or get rid of raises for $199,000? Those are the three options. No. 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 Well, that's, that's a tough option to take to that for lease. We, we really talked about all of this during our workshops together and we can go back and put our heads together again because we did we definitely have to have another meeting for sure i want to say this for street department i've cut as much as i could yeah you did um, <laughs> and I, I got my part here the total that i can use right now is seven hundred forty seven thousand dollars <laughs> i can spend that without blinking but I'm not asking for that. I'm asking for, what was that? $10,800 straight. There are certainly no So that's, I, I see, and Joey and uh, Cap Stevens, Chief Stevens, but we've all, we've all cut as much as it we is could. Chief. None of these are unreasonable asks at all. So, uh, I mean, and, and you're right. I agree it makes sense for you know, documentation is there for leasing vehicles. I understand you get way more bang for your buck, but there is no possible, I'll cut $10,000 to help, but I'm done. <laughs> well, yeah. as we're spending 150K 
gave her two cars anyway. Oh, but that's, that's, that's like trying to this use year. the sales tax money to, to buy a fire engine. You cannot do that with that money. So you're saying, well, that's what you're saying. You can't move it. Okay. Uh, yeah, right. I know I'm. So I know I'm getting getting into the next set. So, is it the general consensus to go and try? What do you want us to do? Nothing right now. I don't. We can go back and talk because we we, we need to have another budget workshop because I need to bring in the hotel and festival and street sales tax, and we'll go back in and we'll discuss our options and then bring it back to the table. Yeah. I recommend we research the lease option. Can this is just a, a thought I had with the um, ARPA funds now that they've released um, the restrictions on them? Yes, I believe we need a community center. Is there a way that we could scale back a bit and find that? What was it? Was it fifty thousand? Um, banners? No, not banners. <laughs> but um, could we scale back and maybe find the extra money in there? Not find it, but take it from there to help these departments. Not on the leasing. Um, and we would have to ask Jessica if we could maybe animal kennels. Not, not on the leasing side for me, no, not but on the just about side. everything that I've asked for as far as the cameras, LexiPole, uh, the uh, dispatch consoles can all be bought out of that ARPA fund. And can all be bought out of that CARES Act fund. Yeah, but I just think so. we've got an uh, email for it over from uh, Mundo and it's it's going to take every bit we've got for the, the It's going to take center. every, uh, I, I don't see us being able to cut from the ARPA no. on a community center to fund Unless a few. Unless you go to a smaller well, and, and, um, building, and I'm okay with that. But. Then the, um, Jessica said that uh, there was, there's a young man that was going to contact you about um, additional grant funding. Available. I've not heard from anyone. Okay. She was going to have him contact me, and I said, "Whoa, that's out of my authority." Yeah, I haven't heard from Jessica. Okay. So. I, I definitely need to funds for the money we did. So we we really don't know the window. We're now in a phase that we're trying to get some hard numbers done, and uh, we we don't need to make any commitments. We know exactly where we're staying. I agree. We have a workshop scheduled before the regular meeting if we want to bring it back for discussion again. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Item next item. 1B discussion regarding recruiting and qualifications for the city manager position. Jacob. We can table this item if we, I mean, we're running out of time at this point, so. Um, do you want me to put it on the workshop for the 25th? Uh, what do you think? Uh, well, have you all read the requirement? Are there qualifications that can put out there? I you guess. got a lot to add or not add? Or? <laughs> I'd just like to say, and I've said it in writing, I'm very happy with the encouragement that we have, Nikki and uh, Janet. Uh, I'm not in really any hurry to jump out there with a new city manager that we have to spoon feed for six months to a year. And uh, I think the council, with the level of cooperation and openness that we have now, is very positive. And let's get some things done. And the city manager is not, to me, is not the first priority. What do you think? I agree. I agree. Um, but I do um, I do disagree with make, putting it in the contract that the city manager is required to live within the city limits. I think that's if it if it goes for one, 
It has to go for all department heads. And I just think that's wrong. And it's an electronic age. So much is done electronically. I don't think it's necessary to have the person live. But that's a matter of right changing. Here. That's a charter. Right. 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 We've tried to change that. Yeah. They, I think they changed it on the last. Just the ETJ, but they yeah. Right. Right. yeah, now we're losing our ETJ. I think depending on when we hire him, we will have to afford that. Yeah, so he will have to confirm to the charter. Now, if they, I know we're having a charter review coming up. If they choose to put that back on there to try to remove it, they're going to be to the citizens. But unfortunately, it does say that. Yeah, I do think, I think it limits us, but it is what the charter says. But I think to include it in the requirements, requirements shouldn't be. It's required by the charter, and the charter can change. Well, well, I think what you well, you've got. If you're going to hire someone, you have to let them know that it is in the charter at this right. time, and that it's a possibility it won't change. Right. And then you hired someone without letting them know that they had to live here. Okay, no, yeah. I, no, I agree with that. I just don't think it needs to be in the in the contract. Oh, you're just. Are you mean where where it's, he said they had to move here within a year? I think. I think you know. I personally think that might contradict what the charter says. The charter does say within a reasonable amount of time. I don't like that terminology personally, but it is no. what it says. Yeah. You know. Um, so I just think that. Um, but that's the what council, I think. Well, I think the city attorney would always tell the council we have the charter to define what that means. Reasonable Absolutely. amount, correct? Absolutely. We need to do well, that. Instead of a box or a trailer, a trailer yeah. Yeah. not good enough. Well, Jay, uh, Jennifer, you put this on there. What do you want to do? Well, I do think it's, well, I mean, <laughs> you want to discuss it more or do you have any? I, mean, I would just like to say, I would just like to say, I know that I'm not necessarily in a hurry to hire someone. I do think the ladies are doing a wonderful job. Oh, but yes. I do think that um, it may take time to oh, find yeah. that person. And I don't want to be rushed into anything or making a hasty decision on somebody because I'm short on time and choosing right. whatever. So I do would like eventually, I don't know, um, never done that part either, but get it out there. I mean, I know the van was looking. I know the Coffin was looking for an assistant. I mean, if they're looking in this area, they don't even know that we're looking. Yeah, yeah but to get it out there means that you're going to hire, and if you're, if you're somebody looking for a job and you read, get it out there, you're going to assume you're hiring and you're getting in your beta and all this stuff. And then uh, basically, if you don't hire, the good people may be gone. They'll go somewhere else. So I, I don't think we want to put anything out there unless we're dead set to move on it. Well, I mean, if we found the right person, absolutely, in my opinion. I mean, unless y'all see another yeah. reason why, if you found the right person, you wouldn't want to move forward. But I don't want to have a month or two months to find someone and only pick the few candidates that applied during that short period of time to find someone. But you're not the cream of the crop. I just, I know it's a double-edged sort of guess, you'd say, because yeah, uh, you can put it out there too soon, you don't have it. If you found the right person, why would you not? Okay. I just don't, I just don't want to settle for anyone. I want to find the right, the right person. person. I agree. Well, I so I don't know what the right answer is. There now. I'm very <laughs> well, thanks, Ken. <laughs> but I'm sure that their their plates are full, <laughs> and for a period of time, that works on them as well, you know, so. Well, I guess just put it on the agenda next month. All right. A monthly meeting, you will say yes. Oh, we can talk about it at the next workshop. Yeah, like yeah let's talk about it at the I'm next workshop. That. that sounds okay. good to me. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. So, oh, well, plan well. is we're going to go back and we're going to work our numbers and see if we can make some magic happen. The thing is, I, it's only, this sales tax number is only through June, and our good months are coming up. So, I know that sales tax number is going to probably build, but I don't want to, I want to see it first. So we may have a little bit of money to play with, and we'll look at it and bring it back to you for the next workshop. Okay. Can you also, I mean, I mean, I have no idea because I don't buy that many vehicles in period of time. Um, but if you were to buy cars, I mean, so you're saying we haven't bought cars since like? We bought one car last year. And it's been like 2016 or something like We bought that. one car last year. We bought two in 2020. Yeah, we buy like, we buy cars like every other year. So every other year you spend, I know, Depending on cost of cars, 100, 150,000 every year? It's drastically gone up. It's normally been around under 100,000. We could get two cars underneath a, under 100,000, and we can't do that anymore. Are those used vehicles? No. no. Those are brand new vehicles. Right. And it's a little different. In 2020, when we bought uh, the street apartment at New Tico, it was $20,000. I can't find one now for under 35. Yeah. The exact identical truck, it's 35. Speaking on that, 
We have ordered, we have three trucks, two for code enforcement and building, and then one for park. We have ordered those trucks in January. January. We still do not have them. We don't even have an estimated time. So there may it's be, there may be, we may be moving that money into a, into a fund balance and putting those three trucks back on the back in the budget for next year. Well, but we're just we're just moving the money yeah. around. Would, would a lease program suffer the same fate in terms of getting the vehicles? Everybody's that way. Yeah, it's possible. And that's why I was looking at Enterprise because of the buying power they've got. They buy more vehicles than anybody in the country. Yeah. You know, so with the bad power, we could have probably got some quicker, but they won't touch us unless we commit to the whole city eventually being on that program, and I knew that wasn't going to happen. So. And this program is through the buy board, which is perfect. Yes. I appreciate seeing that on there. Yes. Well, I think it's still worth looking at because it, one way or another, we're going to show us some money. Yeah. Which, I mean, I've still got 2,009 chargers that are sitting up there that are rusting out that don't run. They're still them? sitting up there because yeah, nothing's ever been done. Uh, I've got six. Because yeah, they're devaluing. I've got six here. Yeah, yeah. Seven yeah. vehicles. So let, me, let me speak on that just a little bit. Um, it takes someone it takes out of their day to get those vehicles inventory and auction. And I've started doing that. I've got mileage on all those. I've got picture documentation. Um, and it's been on my agenda to do. You're just trying to get scheduled to do that with all my other duties just like everybody else here we're tasked three four five hats well if you if we have equipment that we need to auction off each department should be getting the mileage and getting all that done and finding a price and we can do that online correct correct and I, i'm doing that but i mean you shouldn't be doing it all well i'm just saying all the vehicles are <laughs> over at my shop because there's no other place to put them so they're over at my shop sitting and it's actually sitting at the racetrack the Baltimore racetrack area. So I'm trying to get all this done and do my duties just like everybody else. Well, try we are tasked to the T, and I want to speak out of turn. I shouldn't, but <laughs> these two ladies, they can't get their job done. And, and putting the city manager on their paths and you saying they're doing such a good job, they probably are. They are. But they are swamped. Yes, they are. I know they and are. And it's very difficult to get stuff done without a city manager and then them doing their job. So, again, I spoke out of turn and I apologize if I hurt anybody's feelings, yeah. but it is what it is. So, again, I'm working on getting the auction vehicles. I'm just, I just have to get it. I got together. Four, I got four more inside the gate right there. <laughs> I got to get it together, pictures, and submitted to city management and or work to help me get that to the auctioneer place. So it is in the works, it's just a slow work. What about an auctioneer coming in like they used to in the past? I don't think we get as much money for them. Correct. Pros and cons of that is. They'll take a cut. You using Renee Bates? I was going to. I, and, and again, I, I got to get all my documents in a row, but pros and cons of that is several years ago when we did that, a, I don't know, a vehicle we could have got $2,000 for, walked off the lot for 100 bucks. Uh -huh. Jerry Lowe, our mechanic, grabbed that in a parking. <coughs> so great to him, great to a person that can do that, but it's to the fault of the city right. for not getting more out of that vehicle. Prime example, the Mustang we sold a few years ago, 35 grand out of that. Okay. There's no way that would have gone for 35 grand for someone sitting here at an auction in a park. Yeah. So I, I'm again, that's on my to-do list. I'm trying to get that higher on my agenda, but I got road work to do. I got ditches to dig. I got parks to manage. So it's it's a slow process for me. I can only dedicate maybe an hour a day just to get this stuff done. And I don't get overtime pay, but I still stay until 5 o'clock every day trying to do my work just like everybody else. Before you run, you can answer. Yes, ma'am. Um, do the two of you, as wearing all your hats, do you have enough uh, support staff to help you? Yeah, we actually, she says no, we actually just brought in a temp yeah. um, 
that's helping with minutes and things like that yeah. and through September. Um, but we wouldn't, we don't even have enough support staff to help us do our normal jobs, let alone <laughs> cross training yeah. or anything. Yeah. yeah. I'm good. I've shared my thoughts with, I think, all of you. I, I like my job. I don't like the city manager job. <laughs> Here I am. I'll do it for as long as you guys think. But I'm here five that, more years. That's how I feel. <laughs> five more years. Five more years. <laughs> so Hopefully we'll have one by then. No. <laughs> so in your opinion, um, do you want us to look as soon as possible? I'm, I'm with April. I don't want to just settle. I think if you have five great candidates, I don't want you to just pick one to pick one. No, I don't no. want you to pick the best one of five if they don't fit what you guys are looking Absolutely. for. I don't want to settle. But if you never put it out there, you're never going to know who's going to walk through the door. Just because right. you interviewed 10 people doesn't mean you have to hire any of them. But at least you're looking and, and seeing what's out there. And I would, I would like some sort of confirmation that by the end of the year, we are close to getting somebody, because that's about as long as my mental health <laughs> is going to last. Yeah. And, and we don't want to, I don't think anybody wants to see you just burn out. Yeah. Okay, I want to appreciate it. I thank you for asking that question to them, because they're the ones that need to ask that question, not uh, again, forgive me for speaking my turn, but y'all's opinions are great, but it affects those two ladies. It okay. affects all three of us. Well, and nobody really sees what goes on. Rita's oh, gotten know. the most oh, <laughs> interaction. Know. It's overwhelming. We are yes. all overwhelmed, but we're always overwhelmed anyway. So. Now, if we're not getting overwhelmed by your passionate, and I talk a lot, and <laughs> so that should tell you right now, it's overwhelming for me trying to get their job done on top of city manager duties. It's very, very difficult. And I can say that there has been, since Jeff has left, just a decline of leadership because we don't have a senior leader. Yeah. So that's difficult, working now with these people who are our laterals. <laughs> yeah. And I'm thinking I apologize for being straightforward. Yeah. I had that sense feelings. of the situation. I, I, like, I feel like I talked to everybody enough that, I mean, it, that's, it's visible, that it's, the stress of it is visible, and, and I, I don't want y'all to be in that position for two, which is why I, I pushed for it to be on, on this agenda, but, um, I, well, I'm ready to start interviewing. I mean, could we at least list it on TMIL and? Well, let's, I guess, put it on the next agenda yeah. to vote. Yeah. or to move forward with how yeah. you guys want to do it. As far as the qualifications go, the list of qualifications, I, I didn't see anything on there. I'm certainly not qualified to you know, pick those qualifications apart, so everything I, I feel like was on there was, um, I, I feel like we can put it out there and it, it's, it's a good list of what we want. Mm -hmm. Do I need to say for this next week? No. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Take care.